Hey, what's up? In this video, we're gonna talk about how to grow your church congregation, and I'm gonna share with you a seven-part framework that helped a church of 20 people triple their church and get 209 new families in only five months. Coming up. Hey, what's up? My name's Chris Abbott, but all my friends just call me Abbo. I've been helping churches with Facebook ads and plan your visit for the last seven years. And this channel exists to be able to help you do the exact same thing and be able to grow your church using social media and technology and strategies that actually work. So let's dive in. Okay, so we're gonna outline a seven part framework that you can use to use social media, particularly Facebook and Instagram, in order to be able to grow your church. And we actually helped churches use this strategy. We helped a church of 15 that grew to 50 in only two months, a church of 60 that went to 110 in three months, and a church of 130 grow to 200 in only 90 days. Now, this first campaign is actually gonna help you reach people on the bottom three levels of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And then you are actually gonna run a second campaign that's gonna reach people on the top two levels, right? So the first one is going to reach people that are looking for safety needs, physical needs, right? Financial needs, those types of things. Then you're going to use a second campaign in order to tap into people that are looking for more self-actualization. They want to be part of something bigger than themselves, right? They already have leadership skills. A lot of these people are entrepreneurs and business owners, C-level executives. We actually had a church in Michigan who used these two campaigns. He used the first campaign and grew his church from about 80 to about 100 in about four months. But then when he went to campaign two and reached people on the top two levels of my Maslow's hierarchy of needs, he actually started reaching a completely different demographic of people and grew his church from 100 to 150 in only two months. So not too bad. In a six month period of time, going from 80 to 150 using these two campaigns and this seven part framework that we're talking about in this video. Okay, so step one, we wanna create a Facebook ad. And just a little side note, in case you didn't know, Instagram is actually owned by Facebook, right? So there's 2.8 billion people on Facebook and 1.7 billion log in every single day, but there's another billion users on Instagram and 500 million of them log in every single day. So the great thing about running Facebook ads is you can actually also run them on Instagram for free and you don't have to do anything extra. So we recommend running Facebook and Instagram ads. And when you're in the ads manager, it's super easy. There's literally a box you just check to say, yes, run this on Instagram as well. For your Facebook and Instagram ads, you can do one of two things. You can either do a picture of you and your spouse, something smiling, laid back, no suits or posed pictures like you had a professional photographer, right? Selfie pictures actually work great. So you can either use a picture of you and your spouse or you can do what we actually recommend and create a selfie video. You just wanna grab a smartphone and you wanna shoot this vertically on a smartphone no background music, no lower thirds, no graphics or logos or anything like that. You want this to look like you just picked up your phone, shot a quick video, and then post it to Facebook. When you do this, not only will you reach a lot more people, but most people will connect with you on a personal level and they won't even realize it's an ad. It's pretty cool. Okay, so you wanna shoot the video selfie style. It's gonna be 15 to 30 seconds long. And what we recommend for the first campaign is just a prayer request campaign. Just asking people in your community how you can pray for them. Again, this is gonna help reach people on the bottom three levels of the pyramid, on Maslow's hierarchy needs, people with physical needs, safety needs, financial needs. You're gonna have a lot of people reaching out because everybody wants a pastor praying for them. And lastly, when you're setting up the targeting, the best thing to do, don't over-target. I see churches do this all the time. You don't wanna over-target, you basically just want to leave your targeting wide open, which means you're just going to type in your church address and you are going to draw a radius out 10 to 15 miles, whatever driving distance is for your church. For my church in Tulsa, Oklahoma, it's about 15 miles. Pull it out 10 to 15 miles, driving distance to your church, and then leave the targeting wide open, meaning you're going to target every single person who lives within driving distance of your church between the ages of 18 and 65 plus. Okay, step two, Facebook Messenger. Instead of sending people from your Facebook ad to a church website, you actually wanna send them to Facebook Messenger where now you can have a personal one-on-one -on -one conversation with them. This is gonna help build relationship equity and leadership equity with every single person who lives within driving distance of your church. And the best way to do it is through Facebook Messenger. All right, step three, you wanna build a chat bot. Now that sounds kind of intimidating, but it's actually really easy, especially if you use a solution like ManyChat, which is only 10 bucks a month, and they actually have a free version that you can use. And all a chat bot is, is just a series of automated sequences, kind of like a choose your own adventure text message that lives inside of Facebook. So basically, depending on how someone uh, responds inside of Messenger, the chat bot will pull out pre-written responses that you create and send that to them. Pretty cool, it's very, very effective, and it's pretty much the cutting edge of church technology right now. 
And if you wanna check out ManyChat, you can actually click on the affiliate link down in the description below. Check out ManyChat, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. All right, step four, plan your visit. You can actually create a plan your visit sequence using a chatbot, something like ManyChat, inside of Messenger. So the first thing it's gonna do is actually lead someone through submitting their prayer request, and then you can lead them to plan your visit by saying something like, hey, we're having church this Sunday at 10 o'clock, can you make it? Then if they say yes, you can literally walk them through plan your visit, which is just them submitting their name, email, and phone number. You don't want any more information than that. Keep it nice and simple. And they can submit all of that through the chat bot. And you can actually use ManyChat to set up notifications where you get a notification on your phone every single time someone submits a prayer request. And then again, whenever they plan a visit. Make sure to call the plan your visits within 15 minutes. Whenever someone reaches out, you just wanna reach out to them. You can call or you can shoot a text message, but you just wanna reach out just to let them know that you received their plan your visit. You're looking forward to their visit on Sunday and you wanna introduce yourself personally to answer any questions that they have. If you do this, you will see your show up rate for plan your visits skyrocket. A lot of churches forget this step. They just say, oh, awesome. John and Susie are coming out on Sunday and then they're surprised when they don't show up, right? But you just have to remember when someone submits their name, email, and phone number and basically schedules a visit to your church, you need to reach out to them to say, hey, we're so pumped about meeting you on Sunday and your show up rate for planning your visit is gonna go through the roof. Step five is a hosted visit. Now this part is where it gets pretty fun and this is where you get to activate your congregation and actually plug in some of your volunteers. This is actually easier than you think. All you wanna do is you wanna identify the friendly people in your congregation and you're gonna turn them into plan your visit hosts. So whenever someone plans a visit to your church, you're just gonna assign them with the Johnson family, right? So if Bill and Susie Johnson sign up and they are gonna visit your church, then you say, perfect, Katie is the perfect person. She's smiley, she's happy, she's bubbly, she's never met a stranger. And you're gonna let them know, hey, when you get here on Sunday, Katie will actually be waiting for you at the front door. The reason we do this is because it speeds up the natural assimilation process because we are helping people make a personal connection the very first time they set foot on your campus. In fact, when we started doing this at our church, we actually increased our first time visitors the first month by 42%, the second month by 60%, the third month by 87%, and the fourth month by 113% simply by implementing Plan Your Visit. And the best part about it is we were seeing 80% of the people who came through Plan Your Visit join our church within three weeks. In fact, it, it's not uncommon for us to have people who show up the very first time, go through Plan Your Visit, and then literally go to Next Steps right after service and join the church the very first day. Because when you connect with someone personally for the very first time, that's so you know, this is my church, I don't need to go anywhere else, and that's what Plan Your Visit can do for you too. Step six, meet the pastor. Now, this is really important because 80% of people who meet the pastor on their first visit will come back for a second visit. And as we all know, the only thing better than a first time visitor is a second time visitor. So whatever happens during the hosted visit, the one thing you need to make sure to do is to introduce those guests to the pastor. So you can have a formal meet the pastor afterwards, or you can just train all of your hosts to find you as the pastor afterwards and make sure that you get a chance to connect with every single one of the guests. Because 80% of people who meet the pastor on the first visit come back for a second visit. That statistic is way too big to ignore, so you need to make sure to do that with every single visitor, whether they come through plan your visit or not, every single Sunday. And finally, step seven, you wanna send a Monday morning selfie video to every single one of the people who filled out a Connect card. So it doesn't matter if they planned a visit or if they just showed up, you're having all of your guests fill out a Connect card and you as the pastor need to record selfie videos for every single one of them on Monday and personally send those over. It's important that 24 hours have taken place between the time they visited for the first time and the time that they get the video. You don't wanna send this Sunday night because they still kind of lump it in with part of that actual experience. When you send it the next day, people will be blown away that you actually took time out of your day to make them a personalized video. And it's pretty simple. This can be 30 to 60 seconds. It doesn't need to be long. It just needs to be personal. So make sure to use their first names. If they brought kids, make sure to use the names of their kids. Just let them know how much you appreciate them coming out and visiting the church for the first time and then invite them back for the following Sunday. And that's it. Thank them for coming. Use their first names. Talk about their kids. Invite them back out the next Sunday. And when you see this, you, people are going to be blown away and you're going to get a ton of positive feedback. People can't believe that you took time out of your busy schedule to create a personalized selfie video and send it to them and they're going to be pumped, right? Pro tip, if you give a shout out to their kids, they'll even show it to their kids, they'll probably watch it twice 
really, really effective. Churches all over the country have been using the seven part framework to grow their church and it's more effective than I've personally ever seen in the last 20 years of ministry. In fact, we had a church of 20 who literally in five months was able to garner 1,891 prayer requests and 209 families who planned to visit in only five months. They tripled their church, outgrew their building and continue to grow because they're just using a strategy that actually works. We had another church plant of 40 people who added 22 new visitors in the first three weeks using this seven part framework. So if you are interested in learning a little bit more or maybe even partnering with us, you can just go over to churchgrowthagency.com and sign up for a strategy call and we'll hop on the phone and see if we can help you set up this seven part framework for your church. And as always, if you found this video valuable, like and subscribe to our channel. That way you don't miss any of our content.